you have a presentation or speech tomorrow, just follow these steps and you should be more or less good to go. Okay, so let's dive right into it because you clearly might not have time right now. Okay, we're going to assume that we haven't done anything yet. We've not written down the speech, neither have we had any time to practice our delivery. So we're going to break this video down into two parts, writing the presentation and what to do about the delivery aspect of it, especially when we have no time to prepare. Let's start with writing. The first thing to keep in mind is we don't need to write down our speech or presentation word for word. If we do that, we'll get pressurized to memorize whatever it is that we're writing. And that just makes us more nervous. And if we slip up a line here or two, it'll drop us entirely off our trail. Instead, we just need to make a very, very basic outline. And we start by asking these very rudimentary questions. First, does the audience know who I am? Second, what is the key message I want to communicate to them? And third, why is this message important to them? By answering these questions in the very beginning, we'll make sure that we're hitting the speech right where it's supposed to go and we're not wasting time talking about information that's not too valuable for this audience. And then we can simply start outlining the structure of our speech, starting off with the introduction, the body and the conclusion. Now, for the introduction and the conclusion, we have a bunch of videos specifically on these two topics. But if you don't want to spend too much time browsing and finding hook opening lines or very powerful closing lines, we can focus on keeping it simple. For the introduction, we can begin by just starting off with what the main agenda of our presentation is. If we're giving a formal business presentation, we can start off by just stating the agenda. If we're giving a wedding toast, we can just start off by talking about what we're going to say or who we are and how we're related to the bride or groom. And when it comes to the closing, we can very simply close with the main message that we want the audience to remember because the end is what they will retain the most. And that way we'll be keeping it simple, not focusing too much on hooks or powerful endings. And when it comes to the middle portion of your presentation, it's a little difficult to give exact tips over here because it's so subjective to your situation. But in most cases, we need to ask ourselves, is there a story that we already know of that we can use as a vehicle to communicate our key message? For instance, if we're giving a business presentation, can we draw an analogy between our main idea that we're trying to sell and the challenge that we are solving? If we are giving a wedding toast, can we talk about an incident in the past that could help put our point forward? If we rely on stories which we already know, it reduces the burden on us on preparation. Now, if we don't want to use a storytelling approach, we can use the problem and solution approach, which means we're stating out the problem, elaborating on that, and then talking about the solution, elaborating on that with certain examples. Or we can use this very neat framework known as PREP, P-R-E-P. This abbreviation basically stands for point, reason, example, point. It means that whatever topic we're given, we start off with a main point, give a reason for that point, follow it up with an example, and end with that same beginning point. If this method suits you and you need to see an example of that or want to know more frameworks like this, putting a link in the description below of a video that we created which talks more about these particular frameworks. So by answering those initial questions and creating an outline, keeping our key message in mind will be good enough to at least deliver a talk and not miss out on anything important. Now, let's talk about the delivery aspect of it. If you're someone who gets nervous going on stage and giving speeches and whatnot, we need to just remember to keep our delivery very, very simple. Let's break it down into three parts your hands, your face, and your pace. When it comes to our hands, we sometimes don't know what to do with them when we have so many eyes staring at us and we end up either keeping them in our pockets or we end up folding them. And this is not good as it creates a barrier between us and the audience. We want to try and have more of an open posture because that creates more trust and it's more likely that people will like us more if we are open with our posture. But this is about hands. Now, we can use something known as functional gesturing. This simply means using your hands to complement your words. For instance, if you're talking about any sort of verbs like running or sleeping, instead of just saying running and sleeping, we can act it running or sleeping. And this little change can add a more dramatic effect in the way we tell our stories. And other two quick and simple hand gestures that we can use are the chop, which we can use to emphasize on something, or the comparison. For instance, when you're talking about two things, you can say it as, I like cats, but I don't like dogs. As simple as that. And the rest of the time, we can just keep our hands on our side and only bring them up when either of these few hand gestures come into the picture. That'll help us make sure that we're not standing straight all the time, either are we using our hands too excessively. Moving on to our face. I want to start with our eyes. Ideally, we should try to maintain eye contact with the entire room, but if you're like me and find that difficult, you don't need to look at people directly. In large auditoriums, you don't have to look at people at all. You can just look at the spaces between the chairs of where they're sitting. And that will create the illusion that you're looking at everybody, but 
you're not looking at anybody. And if you're in a small venue, you can simply look at people either on their forehead or the area between their nose and their chin. Again, this makes it seem like you're maintaining eye contact without you actually having to do so. Okay, so that's with the eyes. Now, with your mouth, instead of relying too much on facial expressions, which requires some practice, we can simply have a soft smile on our face. If you're naturally poker-faced, this, it can come off as a little dull. So by having just a slight smile and talking, not a big smile like this, because it looks creepy, but just a light smile will help ease the tension in the room and make you more likable as a speaker. And lastly, your pace. If you're a naturally fast speaker like me, you need to slow down your pace more than what you feel is comfortable. And the reason for that is that you might feel you're talking very, very slowly, but to the audience, you're talking in a normal pace. And that happens because we are naturally used to talking very, very quickly. And on the other hand, if we are very, very slow talkers, we need to just pick up the pace a little bit. And we need to keep in mind that the pace needs to be a little high throughout the speech and not just in the beginning. Sometimes we tend to have that pace in the beginning and then it tends to drop off as we reach the end of the speech. And that's it. Now, just one last point. Even if you have just 30 minutes to practice, please, please video record yourself once delivering the presentation and watch that recording once before you go on stage. That one single practice session which takes the equal amount of time as your actual presentation would take will dramatically increase your chances of you being a better speaker. So if that's possible, video record yourself, watch it and self-evaluate. Now, if you have some time and want to dig into any of these topics, speech structures, openings, closing, storytelling, eye contact, body language, voice modulation, I'm linking down in the description below a bunch of articles and videos around all these topics. So go check them out and all the best for your next speech.